a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Can't be caring. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day.
Amen. So listen, go ahead and call him. Call him free. Let him know that Dr. Apostle Sylvia Hunter is on the line tonight. We came here, they, yes, 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 to stir up some stuff. Amen. We came, hallelujah, that you may be able to be enlightened, amen, to, to make a difference in this world. We all owe it to the next generation to be better, to show them the right way. Amen. So we're here on tonight. Y'all go ahead and let them know I'm here. Call them up, dial them up, whatever you got to do. I don't care what you do, just get them here. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to honor the Lord on tonight. I give God praise for my husband. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank God for Dr. Kimmy Kim and the Elation family. Yes, I do. I thank God for everything that she's putting her hands to, and it will prosper in Jesus' name. So listen, y'all, it, it, it's time, high time that we go ahead and, and do some things. And there's a few things that I want to discuss with you on tonight. It's very, very important. Uh, you know, I know people are coming on late, so they get to, they miss it unless they go back and listen by replay. But I want you guys to understand that the Lord is calling us to recommit ourselves to him. All right? The commitment you gave God some years ago is not going to work in this hour that we're in right now. Uh, there are a lot of changes. There are a lot of things that are going on. And as you know, there's a new variant out there, okay? There's a new variant out there. Uh, we're not here to scare anybody. We won't, If we're going to scare you, let's scare you straight. Amen. Not away from God, but to God. Amen. But uh, we're not trying to put no fear in you because God, uh, you know, uh, God, he, he's, he's a gentleman and it's your decision, what it, whichever way you choose, right? And God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. So on tonight, we just want you to know you're going to have to recommit yourself to the Lord. Uh, it's important because there are some of you who have been doing things your way. Some of you have went your own way to do uh, according to what somebody else told you. God has given you instructions and you didn't obey him. There's some of you still hanging in the balance. You're not sure. As long as you are with, uh, as long as you're happy, you're okay. But then when you're not happy, then you want to, you know, so listen, we got people out there jumping ship every day. All right. You got people out there say they love you and the next thing. The date with somebody else. You know, it's a bunch of stuff going on. We got to pay attention. It's more uh, to having a relationship now than what you know. Uh, people are in somebody's bed and out out the bed and back in the same bed that they just left out of. Uh, uh, and there's a lot of confusion. And I'm just going to say this. In this hour, if you're going to cheat, you might as well get ready to die. Okay? If you're going to cheat, you might as well get ready to die because people feelings are at stake and they are listen, they are holding back nothing. They are willing to die for what they believe. So uh it's wise not to play with anybody life like that. So um let's recommit ourselves back to the Lord. Let God know that we, you know, even though, you know, and it first starts with repentance. Repent to God for the things that you didn't even if you didn't do it, repent. But most likely you did it, right? We all do stuff, and we always want to point the finger at others. But what did you do? You had a role in the conversation. You had a role in your mannerism. If you were just standing there, and you just nodded your head, that was an indication that you were in agreement with what they were doing. So we just got to get recommitted. Let's power ourselves up early in the morning. Let's recommit our lives back to the Lord. Rededicate ourselves back to him. He's calling us higher, and we must rededicate because if we don't, we won't be able to stand the weight of the glory of God. And see, the, ah, shit, sorry, yes, sorry. We won't be able to stand on all that power. Amen. But you've got to recommit yourself. You've got to submit yourself to God. Amen. You've got to repent unto God. Amen. You've got to give him your all. You can't be coming. You can't be shy, Steve. You can't come half-hearted. You gotta go all the way or nothing. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you on tonight. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. For you alone are worthy. And we say thank you, God. We say thank you for waking us up this morning, clothing us in our right mind with the activities of our limbs. Father, we thank you right now. 
We praise your holy and righteous name. Father, for there is no God like you, and there's no God greater. So on tonight, speak a word, oh God. Speak a word to our souls, God. Hallelujah. It would have caused us, this word would have caused us to apply to our lives. Amen. But we may be a better person. Well, we may be a better people. Well, we may be fit for your use. Father, we thank you for all these and other blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. So, uh, you know, last week we talked about the Halloween. I think we nailed that. I think we threw that one on out the park. Amen. And so what I want to tell you, there are a lot of more children's lives that have been taken during these, these, you know, these weeks, of course. Uh, the devil comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. And he does not care what child he gets. He doesn't care if you're a child of the Pope. And I know Popes ain't having no children, but he doesn't care if you come from a, a wealthy family. He doesn't care. All he wants is your life. See, he got a plan. If I can take the child, the mother and the father won't come because they want their child back. They want to see their child again, right? And then, but then, you know, some people, are, the children are dying right in front of them. I know people right where around me in this region that I live in, they have lost both kids with less than months apart. People are dying just like that. They're losing their lives. Young people are losing their lives over foolishness, senseless murder, senseless killing. Hallelujah, because they can't get along, because somebody got on the shirt that they want. Somebody got on tennis shoes that they want. Lord, have mercy. You know what I mean? Somebody, it's always about somebody else. And these kids are dying out here, you know, for no reason. They haven't even started life. They don't know what it is to be a young man. They don't know what it is to be a man. They will never experience that, right, because they cut their own lives short. Right, so tonight we're going to bind premature death off of our children, off of our young people. We bind premature death, and we send it to out of darkness, seeking rest and finding none. It is sad that our children are uh, uh, really right now, that suicide is at an all-time time. Uh, your, your children leave you on to date, and when they come, if they come back, most of them are killing themselves because some child, said something to them, and it took it cost them their life. They took themselves out of here. But most likely, when they uh, because of what somebody else said, they were already uh, sometimes contemplating on doing it, premeditating, because sometimes these kids are feeling so bad. They come from broken homes, and they, they have nobody to talk to. They have no one to express themselves. Oftentimes, the parents can be in the home, and the children would not tell them anything. Right, so it's it's hard when they're right there and they don't talk to you. And I say, God forbid, anything happens to any of my children that way, where they couldn't come talk to me or their father. That's a sad thing. So that's why I think we parents, as parents, just always ask questions, no matter how mad they get and say, "You too know the mama, you you want to know everything." Yes, I sure do, because I care enough about you to find out. Because there are a lot of parents out there letting these kids run loose, letting the girls. They ain't even 15 have boys in their bedrooms. Where they do that at? Who raised these folks? You know, where are your morals? Where are your values? Where are your principles? Where you allow a 14 year old to have a boy in her bedroom? Come on now. We got to do better, parents. And you say, well, ain't nothing wrong with it. The devil lives a lot, a lot wrong. You're opening her up to, be, to uh, have sex before time, you're opening her up to get a sexual disease before marriage. All right, so let's be realistic and let's not play about it. You're causing her to have a baby mm-hmm. before she gets 16. So we, 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 you know, let's do better. Let's do better, parents. Hey, Amen. It's not all on one person. You know, that it's all of us that participate in that. Hey, Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, we, uh, I was still reading about Brittany Garner. Granger, I'm sorry, um, the, the WNBA women's basketball, NBA, whatever the word ever it is, she's, <laughs> she's a professional basketball player, amen. And so uh, President Biden and his team have been telling 
her uh, or talking to her lawyers and her wife and telling them that telling them that they're going to help her get out. They have made some calls. Uh, you know, the um, Russia wants to put up. Uh, they want one of their men, some that man who murdered and murdered a lot of people. They want him to uh, be released for uh, Granger and this other guy. Um, but Granger says he doesn't believe that it's going to happen, even though they said by a certain date in October they're supposed to, you know, make the arrangements. But she don't believe it's going to take place. Um, say she's living in, you know, under bad conditions, right? You know, she's six feet nine and she had a bed half half of the size. So uh, they gave her when they put him, you know, in workforce in the prison. They gave her another bed. Uh, but she only has an hour out for uh, daylight outside, and it's so small to that she, you know, doesn't, you know, it's like you're walking around and it's not even in a circle, but it's real small. So she's not being treated, you know, uh, fairly. So we we're just gonna pray that everybody that has been taken uh, in these countries in these places, even the sex traffickers, our children. Our family members, our neighbors who have been sex trafficked, women as well as the boys, as well as the children, we want God to send them home safely to their families. And not only that, but when they touch soil, that there is, there are um, counselors, psychiatrists that can assist these people so that they can get their minds back right, and pastors. We need leaders out there. You know, the fivefold need to be out there as well because everything that we call, what everybody calls mental illness, I call it a spirit, okay? So you need leaders out there who understand when they, you know, uh, doing playing, role playing and all this different stuff. You need people out there, to, you know, that understand it just to cast some things off these people. So they're going to need help, you know, when they come back home to their parents. So all their families, brother. So let us continue to pray for the sex traffic. Tra- so those that have been sex trafficked, uh, pray for them. You know, uh, we pray that every sex traffic curb be caught in Jesus' name. Glory to God. So uh, we thank God on this afternoon. So listen, I'm excited about the word. When God gave it to me a few seconds ago, I said, whoa, okay, this is good. So let us go to Psalms. Hallelujah. The 37th chapter, somebody say Psalms 37. Amen. And we're going to begin to read it. We'll stop whenever time is almost up. Okay. Amen. If you got it, say you got it. Take me, you got it. If you can hear me clearly, let me know that you can hear me clearly. Because I have my phone at it. I just want to make sure you can hear me. Psalms 37. Somebody say it's time to go deeper. It's time to go deeper in the word, y'all. But God is calling all intercessors. There's a special call on your life right now. You're needed. Amen. You're needed in the kingdom. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Amen. I just got... uh, they told me they could hear me, so that's what well. we're going to move on. Psalms 37, beginning at verse 1. And it reads, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Right? For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green earth. I want to go back up there one more time. It says, fret not yourself. Lord, help us tonight. You ain't got to worry about these people. You hear me? Fret, don't worry about it. I don't care what they say, what they do, how they're acting. You don't have to worry about it. I don't care if they won't give you the amount of money that you're worth. I don't care if they don't want to uh, ever uh, give you a promotion. Don't fret it. Don't worry about it. Because in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. The Bible just talking about don't bother your head with braggarts or wish you could succeed like the wicked. In no time, they'll shrivel like grass cookies and will be cut 
like flowers in the sun. I'm telling you, they're getting ready to be cut down like the green grass. Y'all have seen grass being cut. That's low, so, all right? Glory to God. And wither like the green herb. Verse 3 says, trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Again, delight yourself in the Lord. Now, how do you delight yourself in the Lord? By studying the word of the Lord, by giving your life to the Lord, by treating your neighbors right by being a uh, 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 help in the community, by doing what God called you to do. You got it? Amen. Glory to God. So here's the thing. Get insurance with God and do a good deed. When you delight yourself in him, you're saying, Father, I knew I was, I knew that's past tense. I was a wretch undone. Until you came into my life and saved me, you changed me, you filled me, you loved me, you spared me. Come on, somebody. And now I'm a new person. I'm a new creation in you. So when you're delighting yourself in him, you know, it, it's so powerful because there are so many ways that we can delight ourselves in him. When we take care of the orphans, when we take care of the widowers, we are delighting ourselves in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Settle down and stick to your land. Keep company with God. Get in on the best. See, we don't want to, uh, when it says delight, you're supposed to do it with happiness, joyful, being pleasant, not doing it because grudgingly. You know what I'm saying? So he just delight yourself in him. He wants you to delight. Keep company with God. Keep God on the front burner. Don't put him on the back burner. Delight yourself in him. Study his ways, his attributes. Study how he walked in the earth, how he healed the physical. Study how he taught his disciples, leaders. Glory to God. We're moving on. Amen. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. You got to commit your way, though. Some of you don't want to commit because committing means, well, I got to, if I got something to do for the Lord, I got to do it. All right? So you're called to be a praise and worship leader, but you don't like to sing no more. You gave it up. But if you commit what you used to, your ways that you used to have, if you could just commit it to the Lord, you know, uh, and be. Sometimes we don't always feel, like I said, we don't always feel like doing some things. But if you commit and be honest about it, Lord, I just don't feel like it because I don't feel like I'm worthy. But see, he ain't asked you to be worthy. He just said, commit yourself. Commit your ways unto him. Trust also in him, and he shall bring the past. When you trust in him, after you commit yourself, here I am, Lord. I'm a living sacrifice. Here I am, Lord. I'm a servant of you, oh God. I want to be used by you. Here I am, Lord. Whatever you need me to do, I'll do it. Wherever you need me to go, I'll go. When you commit your ways to him. And then you got to trust also in him. Sometimes you be wrong stuff. You ask God for things that you don't even believe that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. But you got to commit your ways. You got to trust. You hear something like now. For you prophetic people, here are the instructions. All of this that I've read thus far are instructions. Okay. Uh, so in verse 6, it reads And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. So now you got your insurance, all right, about God. You got your insurance with God, and you're doing good, right? You're settling down, and you're keeping company with God. Amen. Now he says, but open up before God. Come on here. Open up. Some of you uh, have uh, say you have committed your life to the Lord, 
but you don't open up. You still tight lip. You know, uh, you heard that song say, open up your mouth and say something. You got to open up your mouth. You cannot be quiet and say that you're full of the Holy Ghost because you got to learn how to ask for things. You got to learn how to thank God for things. You got to learn how to pray. Come on here. So you got to loosen up, right? Open up before God. That just simply means come clean. Stop acting like you're an angel and you know you're a hell. Stop acting like you got it all together when you know you don't know what the heck you're doing. It's hard for you to even comprehend. Come on. Stop acting like you're the big person, the big shot, and then you, and then around, look, you know, around here, you acting like you got it all. You got the money, you got the swatch, you got the looks, you got it going on. You got all these businesses, and you ain't even got nowhere to stay. You living with somebody. We gotta stop perpetrating the fraud and open up ourselves before God. Keep nothing back. Don't lie to God. Like I said, it's time for us to recommit ourselves unto him. Recommitting ourselves is first, we got to repent. And as you recommit yourself, you got to open up. Lord, I sin. Lord, I sinned against thee. Forgive me. Don't come to God acting like you perfect. Because if you really want to know who you are, he will tell you and you will be shamed. So go to the Lord for help. Go to him because you need his assistance. Go to him because you, you want to repent of what you did because y'all think it's a game. Well, unrepented sins will cause you to go straight to hell. That's what happened. That's why you got generational curses because your forefathers didn't repent or your foreparents uh, didn't repent of their sins, and it came down and trickled down through the generation. So now you got to deal with all that stuff that they did. Whether they was in witchcraft heaven, whether your daddy or your granddaddy was a warlock, you know what I'm saying, a root doctor, whether your grandmother was a high priestess, whether your mama was a madam, <laughs> y'all don't want to talk back to me today. That's all right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But you, and then you got your grandmama selling, look out of a house, a hit house. That's what they call it. Yeah, I don't know nothing about that. It's a call of your surname, Lord of God. So I said all that to say is, we need to repent. Amen. Hallelujah. So um, as we begin to open it up, he'll do whatever needs to be done. But yeah, we can't we can't come like we don't know what we did. We you know, God sees all, he's all knowing. So open up and tell the truth right off the bat. Lord, I cussed that lady out. Sure did. She came up to me in my face just screaming, had spit all on me, and then I had to end up cursing out. I did it. And if you, you know, and God said, okay, you cuss right. Well, what did you say? Oh, I ain't going to call her stupid. Now, you know you're lying because that's why he asked you the question. One thing about God, he already knows everything, every detail. He knows your thoughts before you think them. He knows how many strands of hair you got on your ugly head. And some of your hair ain't been combed in months. Glory to God. Uh-oh. I think I just hurt a thousand people still. Anywho, let's move on. Glory to God. God will do whatever you need him to do. He'll validate your life in the clear light of day. Whereas you did your arms not in front of me. You you kept that secret away. And so God said, I'm a best the secret keeper. But he will validate your life in the clear light of day. He's going to promote you right in the presence of your enemies. He's going to promote you, my God, tonight. He's going to promote you, hallelujah, because of what you did and what you didn't do, you didn't run your mouth. You wasn't a blabber mouth. He is going to reward you in front of the naysayers, the ones who said you would never make it, who said that they didn't even want to co-sign, that they knew you. But God is going to bring all that to an open shame and stamp you with high approval at high noon. Lord, have mercy. God is the one that gives promotion, people. So this is what he's going to do. 
Let's continue to read. Verse 7 says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Some of you need to go to sleep. Not just sleep, but get you some rest. That I accept that for myself. No, I'm not catnapping. You know, this time that of the year, I don't, you know, it's just, you, you know, I can't expect to sleep. You know, I don't never sleep eight hours. I don't see how people can sleep eight hours. I would feel like I don't miss them. Uh, but we uh, we on alert right now, and so we're not resting with him. Okay? But God still wants us to rest in him. Rest in the Lord. Rest in the Lord. And wait patiently for him. That means simply patiently, you just, <laughs> can I tell y'all something about patience? Never pray for patience. Patience means to wait. It means to wait. How are you waiting? Patiently. And that means, simply means when you ask God for patience, I've done it before, I can tell you what I know. And God made me wait seven years for something that was already in my hand. But he made he wait he allowed me to have to I had to wait seven years this because you want patience so I'm going to teach you patience and that was one of the hardest things that I had to do okay so I'm just being open being open about it and honest and glory to God so as we rest in God and pray not ourselves because of of Him who prospered in His way because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pay we are uh, scared of these folks because they drive in Bentleys and uh, Rolls Royce and they don't even have a job and you are fretting yourself because but you want to be in, you want to be with them but you don't know how they came about that money right and so uh, you 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 know you're a little fearful of okay? But you ain't supposed to worry about nobody who's prophet and, 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 and it's evil, right? Because sure, they're going to be exposed. So don't worry about them. I don't care how much dope they sell it. I don't care how much dope they smell it. I mean, uh, 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 snort. I don't care how much uh, fentanyl they make. I don't care how much hair on they shoot. Fred, not yourself because of evil doers. You all hear me on tonight. Glory to God. We waste too much time worried about stuff God ain't told you to worry about. I don't care about their wicked devices. That's why God said, I'll never have you ignorant of Satan's wicked devices. Glory to God. Verse 8 says, cease from anger. Some of you so angry right now, everything somebody say, you get offended. I can't even tell you your shirt uh, is on the wrong side. You ready to cuss me out. I can't even brush some hair off your collar. Don't, uh, what's wrong with you? I mean, Maybe you got hair on your collar. I'll just leave it up that end. You can't even tell people they got boogers in their nose. They get offended. So you mean to tell me I've been standing up here all this time? You've been seeing that booger. You didn't do anything about it. You mean to tell me all this time? Lord Jesus, help us, God. We got to do better, y'all. Glory to God. We so angry. We angry with the world. We angry because we don't know the next move of God. We're angry because things are not panning out like we thought they should. We're angry because the man that you want is not it belongs to someone else. We're angry because we don't know who we are. We don't know where we are. We're trying to figure it out, and it's just not adding up. So much anger of hurt, abuse causes anger. Being abused physically, psychologically, mentally, uh, did I say physically, all of that verbally, it's, it, it, it can cause you so much anger. So much anger can build up. Glory to God. But God says cease from anger. And for sake, wrath. You'd rather just cease and repent than to have, go through a wrath. The wrath of God. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Just because you're going through, just because you're having a problem, just because times are hard, you still don't do evil. Right? You don't render evil. You don't render evil for evil, but you render good for evil. Right? Amen. Lord, this Bible study is real good to me. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. So listen, quiet down, quiet down. Are you resting in the Lord? Quiet your little spirit, baby. Quiet your little spirit. Y'all just all hyperactive and stuff. Quiet your little spirit. Thank you, Lord. Quiet your little spirit now. Be prayerful before him. Don't bother with those who climb the ladder who elbow their way to the top. So how do a person elbow their way to the top? What does that cliche mean? When you elbow your, but see, you know, there are a lot of ways people climb to the top. And we've known a lot of times people are sleep with sleep their way to the top, right? They're sleep with different people in leadership just so that they can be on top. It's a lot of sin that's going on in the camp. Y'all better hear me. And all these executive offices, don't thank all these people in high position because they are qualified. They're not qualified not by, uh, with the brain, with the sense of brain. They're qualified with their body. All right? Oh, don't y'all get mad. Yes, Lord. Cease from anger, I'm going to read it again, and for sake wrath, fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evil doers, somebody say evil doers, evil doers are those that lie on you, those that want to stab you, those that want to, you know, take your place, those that want your man, those that criticize and those that plotting up against you, those who, who are chanting or uh, uh, concerning you, those uh, those who have speak incantations against your name, those who, um, you know, just mean to do you evil, harm, evil, harm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, bridle your anger. Bridle your anger. For evil doers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, my God, they shall inherit the earth. So why you you so you want to keep following them? That's doing evil. You want to keep following them, and they lead you straight to hell. Or do you choose life and follow the things that are lovely, pure, honest, just, uh, whatsoever things are of good report? If that be in virtue, if that be in praise, think on these things. Are you willing to follow those things, my Lord? Hallelujah. I'm watching the time. Bridle your tongue, trash your wrath. That simply means throw it away. Throw it away. Cool your pipes. It only makes things worse. When you run in your flap, don't know what you're talking about. Stuff going on is just crazy. So listen, let us be able to cease from anger. Calm down, people. Calm down. What's really going on? Verse 10. But let me say this, you know, when you're when you're brighter when your tongue and stuff, before long the crooks will be bankrupt. God investors will soon own the store. Y'all ain't hearing what I just said. The crooks are about to be bankrupt. God is making the last come on here, be the first. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Ah, God, if you just hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle, you are getting ready to see God in an unprecedented way, a way that you've never experienced him in before. If you can just hold your peace of mind, Lord have mercy, those that will just, your opposition will now become bankrupt. Y'all don't hear God tonight. It's going to become bankrupt. And then you are on the store. Lord Jesus, Lord have mercy. You own it. You don't have the piece of the pie. Because why? You didn't have it at first. But everybody picked on you, made fun of you, and you was beginning to spread. You were beginning to worry because you couldn't get anything. You couldn't have anything. And all the evildoers were running everything. The Bible says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Come on here. So any two times, if it's laid up for us, that belongs to us. Just like you just said, the banks, the, uh, 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 they are going to be bankrupt. That's so long. You're going to see the crooks bankrupt. Everybody that was stealing, thieving, you know, uh, always crossing folks out, trying to get ahead, 
sleeping their way to the top, those crooks are getting ready to be bankrupt. Hallelujah, says the Spirit of grace. Thank you, Lord. God is turning the table. He's flipping the tables upside down. The last going to be first. The first going to be last. Lord Jesus, the crooks getting ready to be bankrupt. And we're going to own the store. We are now coming to ownership. The head, not the tail. Come on, somebody. I wish I had some help. Above and not beneath. On top and not on bottom. The lender and not the borrower. Come on here. My, 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 my. Lord, have mercy. I'm telling y'all, God is giving this to do it. Don't worry. People of God, don't worry. Please don't worry about your haters. Don't worry about those who say they're with you. Those who say they're for you. Don't worry. I'm trying to tell you something. Fred, not that there. Because guess what? They're getting ready to soon be cut down. Every lying tongue against you is going to be cut down. Hallelujah. Every, everything that they try to do to you on your job is going to be cut down. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Those Egyptians you saw on yesterday, you never see them anymore. So we honor the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We got a few more minutes. Let's get back into the word. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be yea, but shall diligently consider his way, and it shall not be. So, so while you're trying to uh, sweep around somebody else from them, yours get ready to collapse. Mm-hmm. Verse 11, but the meek, thank you, Jesus, shall inherit the earth and shall, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Thank you, Lord. The meat, those that just cool, calm, and collected, the meat shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Don't y'all need some peace? You need peace to live among these people. You need peace, the peace of God, to go before you in corrupt places, to go before you when, when, when different systems are coming up against this world. We need peace at the White House. We need peace. Come on here, somebody. Hallelujah. And every uh, uh, official, government official offices, we need the peace of God. We need peace in, the, in prison. We need peace everywhere we go. We need the peace of God. But if you're meek, you're going to inherit the peace. You're going to inherit the abundance of peace. Now, that's a lot of peace. That's so, listen, people, when you have the abundance of peace, that's where you are resting so deep. You're getting all your rest because you're able to rest in the Lord when you got peace. How many know you can't rest in the Lord and you worry about how you gonna pay Paul and, and raw Peter? You can't rest in to be resting in the Lord when you worried about your teenage daughter who out there with all grown men. You can't rest in the Lord when your child don't know his his or her identity and they're having an identity crisis and they're doing things that's making the family mad or not necessarily mad but embarrassed. You know what I'm saying? You can't have peace. When you don't know if your husband coming home or not, Lord Jesus. You can't have peace when they don't put an eviction notice on your door. My God tonight. But let me tell you this. When you are meek, the Bible declares that you shall inherit. You shall inherit the earth. And not only the earth, and and shall delight yourself in the abundance of peace. Peace walk with you when you meet. Peace go before you when you meet. Peace is all over you. It's to the point where when me, a meek person comes up and they're living for God, you can just you can just stand in the peace. It's like once you stand there before them, you can feel the peace because it brings a calmness. Have you ever walked into a room and you say, "Woo, this is so peaceful." Because that's where peace resides. Amen. Hallelujah. So we hope tonight that you got something out of here. And if you didn't, let me just break it down. Stop worrying 
about people who, who wants to see your demise. Stop worrying about people who are trying to come up off of your back. Stop worrying about people who have done you dirty. You were up for promotion, and they, they went and did a lot on you. Now they got it. Stop worrying about people, and they're selling all the drugs, and they're selling their bodies to get the money that they have. Stop worrying about it. The Bible says, spread not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, but they shall soon be cut down like the grass and willow and like the green earth. So why are you fretting on tonight? Hallelujah. You should thank God that he's the God of peace. You ought to thank God that he'll give you peace and abundance, hallelujah, if you are meek in spirit, because the meek shall inherit the earth, hallelujah, glory to God. So we thank God tonight. He's simply saying, come on, consider this. He's simply saying to you on tonight to open up before him. Stop being afraid to open up before your your dad. He's your father. Open up. I'll do what you need me to do. I'll validate your life. They'll know that you are mine. But you got to open up. I will give you a step of approval. But you got to stop. You got to calm down because some of y'all are crazy for real. You're crazy. Just trust in the Lord and do everything that's right. And if it don't feel right, you check. Let the Holy Ghost check your spirit. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he's going to give you that husband that you want. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he's going to give you that house that you want. Delight yourself in the Lord, and you're going to get that car that you want. Delight yourself in the Lord, and you're going to open up that business that you've been waiting on. That is the word of the Lord on tonight. We hope that you've enjoyed this word. Let us close our paperback Bible. Now we are ready to go to the phone line. So listen, when you come on here, I'm going to ask you, you know, your name, city, and state. Just tell us where you're chiming in from. Tell us your name and where you're chiming in from. Dr. Kim and Kim, let's go to the phone line. Hallelujah. Good evening, Carl. You're on the air with the Apostle. Good evening, Apostle Dr. Kim. This is Minister Paul B. From your birthday and location. I'm to your phone and I received that word on the and bless you for giving that word to us. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, woman of God. Listen, when things don't go as planned, the enemy tries to set fear on you. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, and uh, but the Lord said, fret not thyself tonight. I don't care what the situation looks like. I don't care what how it feels that you may be already in it, but God said, fret not thyself. Don't you be afraid. Mm-hmm. Don't you run crazy. Don't you run rampant. Calm your spirit. Calm your spirit and re- recollect yourself. Sometimes we have to recollect ourselves because we need uh, things happening so fast and we can get antsy. We can get out of character. But God said, recollect yourself because he's going to work it out. See, the thing mm-hmm. is, you done, you wouldn't have happened here. You done start believing God, and now you done open up another arena for yourself. So, you know, the enemy going to try to fight you now. I ain't going to tell you he ain't. But just listen. But stand on the word of the Lord. Know that he that shall come, will come, and he won't tell you. Mm-hmm. That is the word of the Lord for you. Thank you for joining me. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Mm-hmm. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Call you on the air with the apostle. Hallelujah. Good evening, Mama. This is calling in from Houston, Texas. How are you? Oh, my soul. I'm well, thank you. And all that is within, bless his home. The Lord wants you to bless his name. You hear me? He wants you to bless his whole name. He wants you to recommit yourself. Recommit yourself. There's so much God wants to do for you, woman of God. But a lot of times we hold ourselves up because of our beliefs, 
We hold ourselves up because we don't know and we're afraid to try. We hold ourselves up because we're worried about what people are going to think. The Lord said, but he came to set you free today. He came to set you free in your mind. He came to set you free in your spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God wants you free. He says, whom the Son has set free, they are free indeed. Amen. So that is the word of the Lord Amen. for you on tonight. Thank God for you. I love you. Go in peace. Love you, sir. You, sir. Good evening, Carl. You on the air with the Apostle. Good evening, Good evening. Apostle Dr. Sylvia Hunter. This is Jamaica calling from Mobile, Alabama. Thank you for the word on tonight. How are you? Amen. God bless you on tonight. Listen, God is not a man that he should lie, minister Jamaica. Neither is he the son of man that he should have to repent. What God Amen. said concerning you, he's gonna, it's going to come to pass. God, does, God is not bipolar. He's not fickle-minded. Whatever he spoke over your life, whatever he said to you oh, concerning your life, he's going to bring it to pay. You got to know it beyond a shadow of a doubt. I don't care if it looks like you're failing. I don't care if it looks like you're falling. I don't care if it looks like nobody understands. I don't care come hell or high water. I'm trying to tell you that what the Lord spoke, whoo, it shall surely come to pass. That is the word of the Lord for you on tonight. God bless you. God bless you. I accept. Good evening, Carly. You're on the air with the apostle. Good evening, Apostle Dr. Sylvia Hanna. Uh, this is Minister Emma from Brookhaven, Mississippi. And how you doing on to the on tonight? And I thank the Lord for you. I thank the Lord for that word in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Yes, ma'am. I'm spring. God is good. Yeah, He's good. Amen. 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 For all that He's doing in our lives and our, and how He's progressing us. Some people are actually being moving forward. Then you have those that just ain't going to move. But we thank God tonight that this train is going to move. We bless him. I thank you for tuning in with me. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you too. Love you. I accept. Love you more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Calling you on the air with the apostles. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Anyhow, hallelujah. So we thank the Lord again. Hallelujah on this week. Glory to God. We're going to stop worrying about how people do what they do and worry about what God has given us to do. We're worried about what God has given your hands to do. However God told you to, to however, whatever he gave you that, that will cause you to prosper. You work it. Work it. Don't you know with the talents when God gave out the talents, there were two that came back that and multiplied there. The last dude, he didn't come back from nothing. Well, he did come back with what God gave him, but he hid it. He didn't bring it back. He said, I know that you are the Lord, you God, and that, that you can do whatever you want. You can take whoever life you can give, life you take life. He was just being a narcissist to me. But anyway, he didn't have no, I mean, he didn't multiply his money. God give us gifts and talents to multiply what he's already given us. So you already are who God called you to be. Some of you just now walking in. Amen. I said one more call on there tonight. Amen. So for those of you that are listening, we thank God for you being tuned in. Amen. Y'all keep listening now. Amen. Keep joining us every week on Tuesday night. We thank God again for Dr. Kim Kim Galatians family. I want y'all to know I'm deeply honored of the honor that I received from uh, Dr. Kim Kim Galatians family. Uh, the honor is a servant leader of award 2022. So I thank God for that prestigious award and I give God glory. I don't take it lightly. You know what I mean? So uh, we just we just so humble 
So honor, you know, that God still includes us, all right? So this is the Bible told you that your gifts will make room for you. Your gifts will make room for you. But if you don't use your gifts, they ain't going to make no room. Amen. So listen, y'all, I need y'all to meet me next week. I need y'all to have everybody, everybody, everybody on the line. Amen. Hallelujah, glory to God. It's going down. Hallelujah on this line. It's going down next Tuesday night. So I want you to join me again the same Jesus time, same Jesus station. Dr. Kim and Kim, I love you. It's been real. So Oh.